Welcome back. Well, you might not know the name Ted Nolan, but you should. His is a story of overcoming incredible odds, only to be sidelined into relative obscurity. As Rick Westhead reports, there are growing questions about why the one-time NHL Coach of the Year was effectively blacklisted from the sport. And some are wondering if the color of his skin did him in. I never fell in love with the NHL. I fell in love with the game. There are two schools of thought on Ted Nolan. Some believe he is indeed being blacklisted. Others say Nolan has victimized himself. Name another coach in the history of sports that wins coach of the year and doesn't get hired for 10 years. Makes no sense. Nolan allows that the situation in Buffalo was quite strained. A bit of a GM killer. If I was born in Toronto and my skin was white, I'd be coaching. I'm trying to believe that prejudice wasn't a factor, but I'm concerned that it was. I've always felt unwanted, unwanted visitor in the, in the game, and that feeling of what racism really feels like, what uh, prejudice really feels like. And people could assume what it feels like, but unless you, you live it and you smell it and you see it, uh, you don't know what it's like. I was born and raised on the Garden River First Nation, uh, just outside of Sault Ste. Marie. I'm one of 12. I had six brothers and, and five sisters, and I'm the third youngest, so I was uh, surrounded by a lot of family. Rooted in culture and family, Ted Nolan's journey started here, in a simple home without electricity, which meant many hours outside, discovering the sport that would change his life. I used to make a rink in my backyard, probably about, uh, I would say, 30 feet by 30 feet, and I'd, I'd pump a pail of water. I'd walk around the corner of my house, I'd throw the pail of water down, pack it down with my feet, walk back. So I'd put it down, pack it, and then pack this part, then pack this part, and probably from here to the end of my brother's deck now, down there, 20 feet out, down here, back here. And back in the winter's time, it used to be really cold here. So it'd freeze instantly. If you had to guess, how many trips back and forth? Oof. Thousand. One of Ted's six brothers was Steve, a frequent contributor to the Nolan Backyard Games. The rules are based pretty basic. You, had, you stood up in the whole Canada, and if you bled, you made the red line. Steve took a high stick in the nose, and it, and it was dripping really good. It was coming down, like, really hard. <laughs> it was coming down, and he started uh, running in the house because he was crying. And I grabbed him. I said, you're not going anywhere. You're going to make the red line before you go. So funny that we guided him across the ice and he was going down like this. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was crying. He said, it hurts. I said, you're almost done. You're almost done. Do your job. Nolan graduated from the backyard rink at the age of 16, moving to Kenora and playing junior hockey, a place not accepting of his indigenous heritage. It was one of those years where you went from loving the game to just, just trying to survive in the game. They bump you and call you uh, names I never heard before. Uh, they called me a prairie N-word. I'm going, I never heard that before. Uh, you know, you hear the Wahoo and get back to the reservation and what are you doing here, you stinking Indian, all those type of things. The games that were up there is just the same thing of taunting the racial slurs over and over and over and over again, so. I says, come on, just come back, go play somewhere in the Sioux or wherever the hell else you want to play. And he says, uh, no. He said, if I quit now, it's, I'll quit forever. So he wrote it out, and the rest is history, they say. So, yeah. 
Nolan went on to get drafted by the Detroit Red Wings in 1978. He bounced between the NHL and AHL for eight seasons before retiring in 1986 and accidentally found his calling. After my playing career, I went back to school and Phil Esposito got a, got a hold of me to help the Sioux Greyhounds. I always said, long story short, I started uh, coaching. Ted's boss with the Ontario Hockey League's Greyhounds was general manager Sherry Basson, a man with decades of hockey executive experience. Teddy was what you call a player's coach, but he understood personalities. He met with them a lot. He really understood his player. Nolan enjoyed instant success as a head coach, taking the Greyhounds to three consecutive Memorial Cup finals. And welcome to the doghouse, which tonight is a madhouse. He was very, very good with the players and got them to work hard and knew how to push those buttons. Shoots, scores! We made them work. We made them compete. We made them as a unit. And the more we did that, the more we won. I coached one more season after that, then I turned pro and turned with the uh, uh, Hartford Whalers. Following Hartford, Nolan took the next step. At only 37 years old, he became the head coach of the Buffalo Sabres. People are going to say you're, you're coaching boys in the, in the past, and now you're going to coach men, but I haven't met a, a hockey player that didn't have a little boy in him. It was so much fun. I mean, those guys just ran, and I mean, they were competitive as heck. Oh, twist and roll, start firing punches right at center ice. We had Dominic Hash get net. Wow, he robbed him. Call a cop. We were led by Pat LaFontaine. La 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 Fontaine. When Teddy spoke, uh, you know, pin would drop, and you, you, you could hear that pin because. Uh, guys were mesmerized by his his ability to motivate and and share stories. Looking and finally score! They would go through a wall for him, and then how much further you want me to keep going? Um, he was that type of a coach. Uh, he had the players' respect. We we competed hard. I think we're the next season. We're known as the hardest working team in, in professional sports. In his second season the Sabres began to blossom. Circles the goal, but even with on-ice success, there was trouble simmering. There was some human behavioral issues that he had with uh, the general manager. Muckler. Yeah. Nolan and John Muckler's relationship was strained early on, further wedged by a scary incident to LaFontaine in 97. Guys were coming up to me and said, you look pale, are you okay, you look white. And I said, you know, I think I'm okay. And, uh, you know, the doctors had checked me out. And, and it really wasn't until the next day when Teddy called me in his office uh, that everything changed. He just said, are, are, are you okay? I'm concerned for you. Something's not right. I wasn't sleeping. Uh, my head was racing. I had headaches. And when Teddy said that to me, I broke down. And I said, I, I think something's wrong. And he said, that's it. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm not letting you play. I don't care what anyone says. I'm not letting you play anymore. That's it. The trainer must have told Muckler. Muckler called me. Then the owner called me and said, you're going to have to play him. I said, no, I, I'm not playing him. So he said, so I'm going to give you a direct order to play him. I said, I'm not playing him. Then I was labeled as a, a guy who wouldn't listen to management. And then that's when I started hearing some of the rumors. What did you hear? Uh, I had affairs with players' wives. I was drunk at practice. Uh, these, these people saying these things, Ted, none of this was true. No, it, none, none was true. TSN reached out to John Muckler in the fall of 2020, but he declined to be interviewed. He passed away in early 2021. Galley shoots. Let's go! The Sabres won their first Northeast Divisional title in 1997 earning Nolan the Jack Adams Trophy as the NHL Coach of the Year. And to stand here is, 
it's unbelievable. But, <clears throat> wow. But despite the accolades, Nolan only received a minimal one-year contract extension offer, detailed by one of the team's founders, Bob Suedos. What was the strategy there? You know, I think the original uh, the, the discussions were to make an offer that he'd be found and be, he would certainly reject. Considering all that, uh, all that went on, do you want to come back? Do you feel like you're welcome? Insulted, Nolan rejected the offer. Weeks later, he declined an offer to coach the Tampa Lightning from an old friend, Phil Esposito, due to family considerations. After that, the offers vanished. I like Teddy. I like him a lot. I think he's a good guy. And I think he's a damn good coach and could have been a good coach. A great coach he could have been. Um, but sometimes you're, you're your own worst enemy, and I think that's what Teddy is. Coming up. What happened? I, well, I threw it down the stairs. A storied career hits the color barrier. Oh, if I was white, I'd, I'd be coaching for sure. When W5 continues. Despite a meteoric rise from Memorial Cup champion, Victory finally embraces the Sault Ste. Marie to NHL Coach of the Year, Fans, Ted, Nolan, guided the Buffalo Ted Nolan found himself on the outside, looking in, forever tainting how he viewed his own NHL achievements. Can we try to take a look for that Jack Adams trophy? Sure, I'll show you. It's not quite where it was. I... I got over the anger a little bit. It's in here somewhere. We didn't get it fixed. It's, uh... What happened? I, when I threw it down the stairs, when I, when I got it, I, I wish I could be proud of it. But like I said, it, it took me a long time to even take it out of the box. I, I took it out of the box one year, and that's how I found it. This guy's broke, too. So I must have threw it down pretty good. It, it didn't mean much to me, because if, if it meant, meant much, I, I'd still be working in the, in the game. I'll show you this. This is one of the best, uh, best gifts I ever got in my life. Look at that, eh? Does it fit? It's the highest honor you'd, you'd ever receive. So it's a little bit more significant than a trophy downstairs. Nolan received no NHL offers for 10 years. He coached one season for the Moncton Wildcats in the Quebec League where he once again faced racial taunts during a game against Chicoutimi. I still remember uh, crying myself to sleep when I was a 16-year-old. And all of a sudden, now I'm 47 years old, still going through the same thing, and it doesn't get any easier. But in typical Nolan fashion, he persevered, winning the league championship that same season. Another sign he's back from hockey's brink. And in 2006, Nolan finally got an NHL call from old friend Pat LaFontaine, who he coached in Buffalo years earlier. And I think it's great that Teddy's coaching again because it makes the NHL a better place. When I went with the New York Islanders, was asked to be a senior advisor, but I was just there kind of helping out the owner. He had asked me what I thought, and I said, well, you should give Ted Nolan a second chance because he's that good of a coach. And uh, he hired him. Nolan had modest success on Long Island before being fired after two seasons. GM Garth Snow cited philosophical differences. We feel it's uh, in the best interest for uh, our organization and our fans and for Ted does to uh, mutually uh, agree to move on. In 2013, he was given a second chance in Buffalo. Nolan wanted to turn the woeful Sabres around but management had other ideas. You mean management wanted you to lose? Oh, no question, no question. It was all about losing so we can get the, the proper draft position. And that's wrong. 
That, that is wrong. I think uh, winning is hard enough to, to do on its own. But when you try to lose, it's even worse. Buffalo selects Jack Eichel. Why is it that you're not coaching in the NHL? I, I think uh, I, I'm, I don't know, maybe, maybe part of my fault. Sherry Basson has been a hockey executive for more than 40 years. He was certainly strong-willed. He certainly, once he believed in a certain approach, that was the approach that was going to happen. What if you were white? Oh, well, if I was white, I'd, I'd be coaching for sure. No, no question. It's a boys' club, and all these guys, they grew up together, they all coach together, they all hang together. So that's why I always went back and asked the question, is this because the color of his skin? I don't want to believe it, but I'm extremely concerned about it. It's an opinion held by Nolan's two sons, Brandon and Jordan, both former NHL players themselves. I mean, yeah, you look at the guys that are hired, and it's the same guys always, and the same guys given opportunities again. So um, if he's a different color or whatever the case is, then, then yeah, maybe. The NHL likes to stick to what they know and who, who they are and who their buddies are and who's in the inner circle, who's going to the golf tournaments in the summer, who's going to the coaching clinics. And just because you don't uh, go to all these events, like, that doesn't mean you don't care. It's just... We value going home in the summer more. We value being around our people, going to powwows. Sometimes uh, it's been suggested he's too sensitive about being indigenous. And I don't think he can be too sensitive. Uh, my name is uh, Ted Nolan. Hello. So some of your... Uh, your mom and dad don't know who I am. I'm from, uh, I'm from Garden River, too. Nolan has been away from the NHL for six years. Bend down, bend down, okay, but bend. he's found a new calling. Okay, you guys want to play? Anybody bring a puck? One based on coaching and honoring his late mother, Rose. So once I learned from it, one door closed, another uh, uh, door opens, and I, that's when I started the Ted Nolan Foundation for the Rose Nolan Scholarship Fund because my mother was so uh, inspirational in my life. The Ted Nolan Foundation made one of the largest donations for scholarships in Sioux College's history. We'll help out young uh, First Nation women pursuing education. Whatever educational goals they have, we'll help them. To this day, I'm, I'm very proud to say we, we raised close to a million, half, two million dollars to various different uh, scholarships. Now we're giving money to the universities. Because my mom was very instrumental in the power of, of learning. So it was, <clears throat> that, was, uh, that was a pretty powerful thing. He's also started three Nolans with his two sons, a charity designed to assist indigenous youth. But anyways, everybody go line up on that goal line, okay? We do hockey schools all across Canada and strictly first stage communities, and it's what we talk about. I mean, you gotta be proud of who you are. Don't let anyone uh, tear you down. Good save, how to stay with it. When we do our hockey schools, you know, we talked to these kids about um, you know, being good people and, and being good leaders for their community. So I think when he goes in there and tells his story, kind of what he went through, I think he just wants to kind of show them that, you know, if you stick with it, that great things can happen and will happen. Pass! Oh! Didn't have access to the best sticks, the best skates, uh, extra training, didn't have access to all that stuff, and he was able to make it through hard work, so... I think he's, he's a, just a great leader for our people and a good role model for our people to look up to. I said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to try to uh, share my story with as many people as I possibly can, uh, particularly with the First Nation kids. When you leave, it's not going to be the most accepting places that you're going to go to. Maybe you might cry yourself to sleep, but it just teaches you that not everything's going to happen overnight. 
And uh, the first pail of water that I poured uh, was about eight years old. And, uh, you know, 16 years later, 16 years later, I played my first game in the National Hockey League. So it does take a while, but if you persevere and you fight and you believe and you, and you, and you have that feeling, uh, things happen. Do I believe that I still be, should be still coaching in the league? No question, I should be coaching. But if you don't know anybody, who's gonna hire you? But nobody's gonna know, call you if they don't know you. And so I'm just saying, get to know someone first. Don't assume uh, that you think what you think is true about them. Ted Nolan yearns for a return to the NHL and hopes sharing his story will open a dialogue in hockey, not just for his sake, but for any other Indigenous coaches trying to make their way.